Well, good morning, everybody. I, I can't think of a better place to be this morning. The energy and excitement and commitment manifested in this room uh, is not just heartwarming, but I think it's a, a sign of all the good that is going to come out of this. I want to add my thanks uh, to IIE uh, for enabling us to come together in this special place. And I want to um, say a few personal words about Ann Mae Chang, who had come to our office as a fellow uh, after many years at Google and uh, literally didn't have a, uh, a job description. And I said, just go and think of the possibilities of that nexus between women, technology, development, and all of the things uh, that you all know so well. And uh, I can't say enough about the leadership that she has provided. And I don't know if you know this, but uh, typical of her, she is heading off to Kenya for about three months uh, to work with our embassy there uh, in that laboratory in the developing world. Speaking of the nexus of technology and development, it's certainly happening uh, in Kenya. So. Uh, we wish you well, Anne May, and we will look forward to having you, you back here telling us all what to do. As you all know uh, so well, uh, this would not have been possible without so many in the room, and I also want to add a special thanks to UN Women, uh, which has provided strong leadership in this area. I remember very early after uh, Michelle Bachelet was named the new head of UN Women, uh, she was doing a panel on women and technology, and I think that sent a very strong signal about how critically important uh, these issues are to women's empowerment. And I think you will all agree that there has been no more tireless uh, advocate on these issues than, than Secretary Clinton, uh, who has really uh, pushed us uh, to, to as far as we can go uh, in both creating public-private partnerships, as this is, uh, all of us coming together, multilateral organizations are here, private sector representatives are here, and we're all looking forward to uh, Intel's launch of its extraordinary uh, new study. Uh, government is here, uh, NGOs are here, and I think this is really, as she so often says, uh, the way we need to work going forward. Government doesn't have all the answers. Private sector doesn't have all the answers. But together, we bring our competencies, our resources, uh, and we can really achieve far more than we certainly might otherwise. Uh, certainly in this area of technology, uh, we know increasingly uh, that it is one of the highest potential ways uh, to address some of the uh, still tough development challenges we confront. Uh, not to embrace this area is to really be pushed back as we advance into this 21st century. And in many ways, this is the great equalizer. And should we fail uh, to close the gaps that are already occurring, uh, we will fail in so many other ways as well. And as Anne May said, uh, you represent not just folks from the United States here today, uh, but really from five continents, bringing a wealth of experience. Uh, and I think out of today, um, I hope will come that kind of new collaboration, uh, the creation of uh, new networks, uh, strategies, and commitments uh, to propel this work forward um, in, a, in, a, in the many days ahead. I just want to mention uh, what I think are some broad topics, uh, a few of them, uh, that hopefully will be the subject of much of your discussion, uh, because I think in many ways these areas uh, say a lot about the potential uh, and also of a lot about the imperative to all of us as to why we need to work uh, that much harder. Uh, first of all, in terms of possibilities of women in ICT, uh, we need to work more on the access issue. 
Uh, Shelley Eskew and her colleagues will shortly uh, tell us about what they have discovered through this remarkable uh, new uh, data, this new study that will be released today uh, in terms of access and the Internet. Uh, but we know from a study on, on uh, mobile technology uh, that there is a growing gender gap in, in both of these areas and, and more, I'm sure. Uh, and I think not to address the, the potential for moving back instead of moving forward uh, because of access to this, these critical ICT tools uh, would be to uh, not advance us all and what we care about uh, to a better future. Uh, this is why uh, a couple years ago now, Secretary Clinton launched M Women, which was an initiative based on uh, what came out of another study. And I have every expectation that with this Intel study, we will continue to keep the urgency of this topic uh, before us and so many who aren't in this room. And the, the study that she launched and the project emanating out of it was a recognition from the study that 300 million fewer women had access to mobile technology uh, than men. And GSMA, which was pivotal to the study, as was the Cherie Blair Foundation, uh, came together with USAID, uh, the government, to look at ways where together private sector doing its piece USAID doing the kind of development work it does, come together to figure out what can be done to, in the next, in, the, in three years, to begin to have that 300 million. And we are on our way uh, from all of the measurements that have been um, put in place to do that. The second area which is so closely related to access is what this represents for development. And that's what, in many ways, is so exciting about today, Women Development ICT. You know, I learned a lot when we were preparing for the M Women launch, and that is that extraordinarily important role that that tool, mobile technology, a simple cell phone, can play in terms of development. Uh, women, and I have seen this firsthand, uh, who are entrepreneurs at the lowest level of uh, economic activity using that simple technology, even illiterate women, to find out what the weather is going to be, which will it highly influence their crop work on a given day, or where the market is. So they're not walking five miles in vain only to find out there was no market. Uh, using it as a tool for literacy teaching, uh, literacy learning, uh, using it for vital health information. I know there are people here uh, very active in, in the health field and what ICT represents. The difference between life and death often uh, is that kind of information that might not otherwise uh, be available but for what that simple cell phone represents. Uh, as a tool to protect women from violence, uh, an alert system. But imagine what we think of microcredit, I can remember not that many years ago, um, it was an idea. It was doing some small work. It has turned out to be transformative. Imagine if through this technology, the poor of the world who are still mostly unbanked are banked. And you can safely, if you're poor, transact financially um, your savings, moving money from an urban job to the village where your family lives. Uh, whatever it is, the prospect of this money now being available uh, in ways that can have a, an extraordinary impact. I don't think we've even scratched the surface of the possibilities. And that's mobile technology, and I know all of these things fit together today. But the Internet will loom as large already it has. And, you know, it takes your breath away uh, to think about the role social media has played uh, in literally changing the face of countries. 
uh, and what's happened uh, in terms of self-determination. Uh, so we are talking about something today uh, that is so big that I don't think we fully grasp it, no matter where we sit. Uh, and it is going to be up to all of us and so many more uh, to really blaze this trail a lot further down uh, the line to the goal. And lastly, um, I think the prospects for economic opportunities and ICT uh, are just um, mind-boggling. You know, when Edie was up here talking about women's economic empowerment, um, we've done a lot of work at the State Department in terms of growing women's entrepreneurship and looking at hurdles that they confront, as vital as that entrepreneurship is to growing GDP and jobs all over the world. Access technology looms quite large. There's a whole array of jobs out there uh, that would transform lives if they were uh, accessible in ways that women would see these new opportunities, uh, even including digital micro work, where there are some extraordinary examples today of um, people who hardly comprehend uh, what it is you all know so well, and yet they're earning a livelihood that they could not imagined, have imagined, uh, in terms of uh, digital uh, micro work and other kinds of work. Um, we at State have initiated several programs. One is Tech Women, and one is Tech Girls. And these emanated from the likes of people like you. I went out to Silicon Valley several years ago, early in my new job at the time, and I sat with a group of the gurus in your business, and I, I was talking about the possibilities for women globally. And to a person, and these were names you often read about in the business page, what did they all want to do? They said, please tell us how we can transfer what we know to help others in the developing world. Uh, and the light bulbs went off, and I thought, wouldn't it be great if we could bring some women who were at the beginning stages of growing um, technology, the, gr the growing the technology field or businesses in their countries to work with these extraordinary people in Silicon Valley. And out of that came uh, tech women. The first group uh, were about 25 women from the Middle East who spent close to a month uh, in the United States uh, learning uh, how they can grow their expertise and skills and application. And then came, uh, months later, Tech Girls. And you never met a more enthusiastic group of people in your life uh, than those very young women who were now fully aware they were on the cusp of something uh, that they couldn't touch, but they could taste, and now it was becoming real in their lives. These will go on uh, as uh, commitments going forward. Uh, but I think just a small example uh, of what is possible. So I hope that uh, I will hear uh, what comes out of uh, this effort over the next many, many hours to which you've all committed yourselves, uh, and that uh, the new networks, the collaborations, the strategies uh, will be so robust and lead uh, to such new ways of making a difference, uh, transformative ways that as we all look back to today, we will say, I was present at the creation. Thank you all very much.